Okay, so you did uh, one patient, let's do another one. This is completely different patient, sorry for that. <laughs> you have the physician that has to make a diagnosis. So I'm just leaving you alone and try to follow the steps we already Don't explained. go so far. Yeah. So I insert the probe and I have the image of the great vessels, yeah? Yeah. So sorry for this artifact in the uh, superior vena mm -hmm. cava. Okay, but, uh, no worries. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so you asked me to check the uh, longitudinal view of the aorta. I do not say, see any dissection, so that's one rule out is from the main diseases. Okay. Okay. So explain what you're going to do next. Yes. I'm going a little bit deeper. And then to adjust the plane, not this hand. Go slightly deeper mm -hmm. and again to make the aorta circle. Mm -hmm. Circular shape, not yeah. elliptic. Remember to keep it in the center. Because mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Because you see when you move it to the center later, you will have trouble because you will get, uh, have to re, re uh, correct ones. You see it's not proper aortic uh, view in the long section. So first of all, put it in the center. Mm -hmm. It's not yet in the center. You see, it's, it must be precisely in the center. Do you think we are too deep or too shallow? Uh, too deep. Correct, because you see the LVOT and mitral valve. So you have to pull back, but keep it in the center. Okay, now keep it in the center. Yes, and now correct the angle. It's not exactly in the center. I will show you where the center is by putting here the line which is now perpendicular. You see, you are not exactly at the center. Yes, now I am. Now you are. Mm -hmm. And now you can just a little bit push the probe and again try to put the center of the valve on the line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now slightly, uh, you know, correct the angle. And then you are, you are, you are correct now. So, so when you now change the angle to 140, you will probably have the long axis view. So you see this patient has different angles than the previous one. Yes. It doesn't matter. What we have to show is shown. Doesn't matter. The angle is slightly different from the, from the previous patient. Good. So now inflow, outflow. Can you show it? Yeah. So what, what have you done? I just changed the rotation, plane rotation to 60. Correct. And we have inflow, outflow, outflow. Yes. Now the next one would be the mitral. No, the bicaval is the very bicaval. good to, to do it now. Of course, you can change the order anytime, but yes. this is the most ergonomic, let's say. Mm -hmm. So I have to change the rotation like this. Yes. And, and the then second thing you have to do. Change the plane rotation. Correct. To 90 more okay. or less. I will just decrease the, the gain because you see this is the CT image. That's why it's not uh, so well visible, but here's uh, the bicaval view anyway. Okay, very good. And now we go to the mitral. Yes, so we go back to the zero degrees. Mm -hmm. Look for mitral leaflets here. Mm -hmm. Probably you are slightly too high. You see, instead of mitral valve here on the right side of the aorta, you see the vessels. Uh, coronary vessel. So probably you have to go deeper, not shallower, but deeper. Yes. And here's the mitral valve. Okay. And then we have to do the retroflex. Yeah. To have the four chamber view. Very nice. You see the four chamber view. Um, actually, when you look at the model, you see you are slightly off axis yet. Mm -hmm. So uh, not even looking at this, you, you may slightly adjust by pulling slightly to have the uh, uh, the mitral annulus the biggest possible. This will tell you. And the apex, is, it is perfect when the apex is not moving, right? So this is the perfect So this is position. how you yeah. check if you are in real. Yeah. Of course, it's here. not always possible. I'm just showing you the ideal situation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just have to make sacrifices, right? If you don't have this uh, correct position. Okay. And now we go to intercommissural. So we just change the plane rotation. Mm -hmm. 60. Yeah? 60. Can you show me the papillary muscles here? How, how can we do that? Yes, you see? 
You see they are both in the plane, so most probably this is the intercommissural view. Of course, uh, you have different variabilities of the, of the papillary muscles. If you, if you rotate in this patient, you see that there are many heads mm -hmm. yeah, of the papillary muscles. This may happen like this. Okay, and now position the probe exactly at the center where the coaptation is. And my question is how to get now the long axis view with the LVOT? Um, change the rotation, plane rotation, to so 90. Yeah, 120, sorry, yeah. Really, 120? You had 60, so how okay. to get the perpendicular image to that? Uh, plus 90, yeah? Yes, so it's gonna be 150. So what's written in the books is not always correct, mm -hmm. because uh, actually the, in mitral views, the correct uh, plane for the LVOT view is usually above 140, 150, sometimes even 160 and more, depending on the uh, angle of the intercommissural. So it's easier just to add 90 to what yes. you have currently. Yes. And also the X-Men helps you to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, always adjust a little bit because you, you want to see the aortic valve uh, fully. Yeah. So what do you think about this patient? Let's, let's go back to 60 and show X-Plane. So we will see it in, the two, in two views at the same time. 60 and now X-Plane. Uh, yes, and put it, the line or exactly in the center, right? So through the left ventricular apex, yeah. What kind of disease is it? So one of the segments of mitral valve is prolapsing uh, to... Mm, no. No, I know it's a very rare disease now. Uh, you probably you the parallels, yeah? No, no, it's a mitral stenosis. Because you see that the oh, leaflets yeah. are not moving freely. Uh, um, to say that the patient has prolapse, we would have to uh, show that the, uh, that the leaflets cross the line of the annulus, which is not the case here, because this is systolic frame, and you see that the leaflets did not go above this line. So there's no prolapse. However, if you look at the motion, you see that the posterior leaflet is completely immobile, fixed, yes. fixed. And this is, we call it doming of the mitral valve, where the edge of the leaflet is uh, held by some problem here. And only the basal part of the anterior leaflet is moving up and down, uh, creating this dome. So this is doming mitral leaflet, typical for mitral stenosis. If we activate the color here, you see that the flow in the diastole is turbulent through the leaflet, through, through the valve, and also there's uh, some regurgitation. Okay, um, so we examine the mitral valve. Let's just see uh, if it's correct uh, again with the markers. So I will put this red ones and the yellow ones, and then we go to the 3D, click, and rotate, and rotate, and you see it's almost there. It's slightly off axis, but uh, with the 3D we can, we can um, uh, adjust it a little bit, but it's almost ideal. It's just a few degrees less or more. It is the, uh, the good position. Okay, so now let's go to the appendage. Yes. Ah, it was good to keep it in, at 60. Okay, what we have to do? We now have a retroflex, so now we go antiflex. Okay, yeah, what do you think? I think there is a thrombus inside. Yes, so this atrium, this, this left atrial appendage is really a problem here. Uh, this is CT, and so we cannot really say. Uh, it may be just a blood, uh, contrasting blood. But uh, this is very typical to have mitral stenosis and the thrombus in the left atrial appendage. So you can do really good antiflex here. Uh, position the, the, the uh, appendage in the center. And once again, you can move from zero. Again, some motorcycle mm -hmm. gas you know, maneuvers. Yeah. Slightly higher or deeper, yes. And now go to 45. Again, some adjustments. Mm -hmm. 90. Adjustments. 135. Yes, still we have thrombus. Yes, so, so definitely there is something in the left atrium appendage. Okay, 
So we finished with the um, mitral views and uh, left atrial view, uh, left atrial appendage view. So now let's go to the transgastric. So I'm putting the probe around 35 uh, centimeters. Mm -hmm. And we are in the place of papillary muscles. Mm -hmm. And I have to do the antiflex. Yes, and here you see beautiful image of the mitral stenosis, right? You see that the leaflets are thick Calcified, and yes. Calcified. The calcifications are not really very, very significant, but they are, they are present. And uh, also we can see that opening of the valve is not complete. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so now the two-chamber view. Remember, when you have the mitral valve in view or papillary muscles view, you just increase the angle to 90. Okay, you have it. Um, good. You see that you saw the appendix just a moment ago. Yeah, yes. you can see it. Good. And now if you go opposite way, you will go to transgastric long axis view. So rotate clockwise. Rotate clockwise. Yeah. You see? And increase the angle a little bit. To see the Can you show it again on the, uh, on the model? model? Yes, yeah. of course. So it's easier when you have the model. Unfortunately, the echo machine does not have it <laughs> yet. Okay, so uh, do you think the angle is correct? No, I think we should increase the angle a little bit. Yes, like this, yeah? And sometimes it's good to bring it mm -hmm. towards the, the edge of the sector, which is not so easy here. And we should not push with the flex probe, so be careful about that. And finally, the deep transgastric view, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest zero. <clears throat> and uh, go, 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 and anti-flex. Mm -hmm. Yeah. More or less. Good, thank you very much. So this was uh, an interesting study. And um, so the diagnosis is mitral stenosis with some classifications. We are not going into much detail here now. We will do it later on. And there is a thrombus in the left atrial appendage, which is a very important finding.